service while you're seated. But if you need coffee with your dessert, the coffee urn is right over where Sandy is waving to us. So um, you, you can make that available. And I'm not going to do a lot of uh, introductions this evening. We have a lot of important people here and that would take a long time. But I do want to talk about the Founders Program and the point of having Founders Day. This event was begun in 2002 to honor residents of Dana Point who have made significant contributions to the community during their lifetimes, contributions that improve the city and the life of those who live here and are part of the ongoing history. Pioneers of the incorporation of the city, those contributing to its cultural life, city government, business, various boards and commission members, as well as supporters of clubs and nonprofit organizations in Dana Point. The Founders Day Award is given annually by the Dana Point Historical Society in a program like this May General Meeting. So welcome to the May Founders Day Meeting. We have We have previous Founders Day honorees with us tonight, and I'm going to ask them to stand. In 2005, Elizabeth and Bill Bamatri were named founders, and Bill is here. Elizabeth is in England. Bill, would you stand, please, and wave? Thank you. <laughs> well, Liz went to visit her mom, and then, uh, in 2007, Helen and Mel Pierce were chosen. Ellen, Helen is here. Helen. In 2008, our Founders Day honoree is, was Susan Hinman, and Susan is with us. Susan. In 2011, B. Reed was named a founder, and B, would you stand, please? And he may not be with us now, but he stopped in from running uh, earlier in 2014, Harold Kaufman, and he was here with us today. Uh, and others ha who we invited tonight, of course, former founders, unfortunately had conflicts and could not be with us. So with that, while you're enjoying your dessert and coffee, I'm going to introduce Nancy Jenkins and Nancy has been in charge of the program. Nancy? Thank you, Barbara. I have only been 50% of this, or maybe only 20%, because I think we need to acknowledge Sandy Howard. I mean, because Whoa. she has a great. Oh, Sandy Howard Iverson. I'm <laughs> 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 sorry. You know, when you get older, yeah. you just don't. Okay, I've had so many days. <laughs> <laughs> and really, our first person who has planned all this is we just have to honor. Let's do one big round of applause for our honorees, both Marlene and Bruce Beal. <laughs> Being in the historical society, people have been asking me, well, you know, we think the Beals have really done a lot, but they weren't here when the city was formed, and well, they weren't here when the uh, Dana Point Historical Society was formed, so what's the founders of? And that's what you're going to find out about today, because they have reached almost everybody in our community through their gracious effort, through their bon uh, pro bono work, through their legal firm, and not only that, but they have also been on some of the boards. So, I would like to share how Bruce and Marlene got here in 1999. And I think they just found it accidentally, but they said, shouldn't say that. <laughs> but after they discovered and arrived, that it was that Dana Point, in, they are now vowed they will never leave Dana Point ever, ever. Previously, they had lived, schooled, and worked in Colorado, 
California, Oregon, Greece, Italy, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, and Thailand. We're glad they're here in Dana Point. So that you really understand how Bruce and Marlene are part of the whole entire community, we have 10 and each minute it's growing and now we have 11 different organizations that they have really touched and had some influence. So I would like to ask the um, Bob Perdue, who is the Commodore of the Dana Point Yacht Club, and we want to thank you for our, the wonderful facility. And would you want to come up here and just say a few things about it? Thank you. Thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you for inviting, and inviting me, and congratulations to Bruce and Marlene um, for this. Uh, uh, from Dana Point, from the day, from the position of Dana Point Yacht Club, Bruce and Marlene are an integral part of our of our yacht club and the management and the board. Uh, Dana Point Yacht Club. Uh, Bruce is judge advocate. Marlene is secretary. I believe the, they've held that position for about 10 years of their 12 or 13 years as being members of Dana Point Yacht Club. Um, I can't. When I first joined the club, I can't tell you how many staff, how many commodores, staff commodores who are who are retired commodores, looked at those two and said, "Those people have kept me out of so many problems in my past, <laughs> kept me out of out of trouble, or got me out of trouble in the past." Um, they are, they are uh, just, um, they're a part of Dana Point Yacht Club. They are loved by everybody. Um, everybody knows who they are. They, uh, they have raced in Sonata with us, with uh, the club before on their boat. They're, they've been in, uh, active racers with us and um, they just, they're just a big part of the Yacht Club. Uh, very well known, very well loved and adored by everybody. And we just really appreciate everything that they've done for us and the contributed, uh, contributions they've made to us. And I just want to thank them and, and honor them tonight. So anyways. Thank you, Bob. And he's mentioned their boat, so I would tell you afterwards to go out and see their beautiful boat, but they can't even moor it in Dana Point. It's in San Diego, Mission Bay. Mission Bay. So I guess we'll all have to take a tour down there. 20 year waiting list. 20 year waiting list for him. I think there were 10 or 11. The second one I would like to do is Heather from Heather Johnson from the Chamber of Commerce. Now, Bruce has been on the board of directors a long time, was on the board of directors. And, and when I talked to Heather and said, Heather, could you come and say a few words? I mean, she almost had me in tears. So it's my privilege to say, come on, Heather. Yeah, I have to live up to that, right? So um, I just want to say, you know, looking around, I see all the volunteers here, and I see volunteers that throughout the years, you see them at all the events at Dana Point. All um, everybody who's a volunteer, raise your hand. <laughs> right? Everyone's a, okay. So volunteers are really the heart and soul of the community. And um, with the Dana Point Chamber, we have a board, and our board is all volunteers. And these are people that really keep the chamber on the straight and narrow. And if we have strayed our ways, which I think we've had a couple of bumpy moments. Um, We've had people that really kept the chamber open and kept going, and Bruce was really the person that, that um, had that for us. So with Bruce and his wife, you guys did so much for the chamber. You were on the chamber for board for seven years, almost eight years. Um, he also was um, on the hiring committee for me, so um, I have a special, that's why I'm up here being so nice. Bruce, you look really handsome tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I have to say, he was, he, when we were going through our rough patches, he really helped the chamber stay afloat. He made sure that we came out even better. So you're talking about founding tonight. So Bruce is a founder of the new Dana Point Chamber of Commerce. And I have to say, we thank you so much for it. We thank you for all of the work that you did with us. And just thank you for being such a nice, welcoming couple to me. So thank you guys. Thank you. For many of these nonprofit organizations, of which we all 
uh, forms our kind of our fiber of our whole community. Uh, Bruce and Marlene work together and helping them to set up their nonprofit status. And as a primary one that I think many of us in here have enjoyed is the Dana Point Symphony. And Scott? <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> About five years ago, a little over five years ago, um, we got together, made some decisions to really sort of vault the level of music, arts, and culture. And we're, you know, we're sitting in a group here dedicated to culture this evening. You've been, you know, been pursuing that for a long, long time. Music and art certainly complement that a lot. And you know, uh, Berenika Schmitz, who you all know, and I sat down and thought, boy, how could we bring a truly world-class symphony orchestra on a sustainable economic basis, on an affordable basis to patrons, to the city of Dana Point. And I was particularly motivated because when I gave my State of the City speech in 2011, I said music, arts, and culture is the foundation of our economic development in the future, our residents' quality of life, our brand of our city. We are going to lift that as high as we possibly can. I, I got one email when I got home from that speech and the email said, if I wanted to listen to an orchestra, I'd drive to Costa Mesa. <laughs> I looked at it and I thought to myself, I'm gonna get the IP address of this person and go burn his house. <laughs> <laughs> how, how wrong headed a concept is that? Because I grew up, I spent my life, my childhood growing up, same town that uh, Bruce and Marling passed me in California, which is steeped in music, arts, and culture and is one of the most tremendous examples I've seen of it to this day in Southern California. So when we were looking for someone to help us form uh, the nonprofit that ultimately became the operator of this of this uh, terrific organization, um, we we came to Bruce. Right? We came to Bruce. Uh, Bruce gave us that same sage counsel and advice. We formed. Um, we we got into operational mode. I'm very proud to say that. Just over five years later, we have an operating balance in that nonprofit corporation of one hundred and six thousand dollars. Five years, and every single performance, the last of which for this season will occur on July 11th, and I'm so proud as the president of that organization to say I would love to see you all there. I would love to see you um, pouring out into the parking lot up at St. Edward the Confessor Church. But I can also tell you that Bruce didn't stop just by production of the mere, um, as they say, uh, boilerplate, the, boilerplate, the mere scrivener's uh, duties. He and Marlene donate substantial sums as donors to that every single year. And when I look to my right every single performance, I see Bruce and I see Marlene there humming along with every single stanza <laughs> that is going. So he walks, he talks the talk, he walks the walk. Um, I could go on and on, and frankly, I've gone on and on about other topics before. Um, and a little later, um, I'm going to offer a little mus musical tribute to Bruce and Marlene as well, just uh, it, for my profound gratitude to their participation in this community. I, I cannot say enough about these two people. I disagree with them about half the time about everything. We, we love the struggle. We always end up with a big hug. Let's give them all a big hug this evening, ladies and gentlemen, Bruce and Marlene B. Thank you, Scott. And uh, he mentioned that they are donors. Not only did they help form it legally, but they're Silver Baton uh, sponsors of the symphony. And the next one is June 11th, right? Yeah, June. June 11th. Yeah, that's the final one. So it's June 11th. <clears throat> Another really important organization in this town, of which I think everyone in here has heard of, is the Dana Point Fifth Marine Support Group. And, yo, they said. So I'd like to invite the president, Terry Rifkin, up here. Good evening, everyone. I thought I would start out with my glasses rather than looking pathetic, uh, squinting. So, um, in a heartfelt way, I, I wanted to 
talk to you, Marlene and Bruce. Uh, last year, Colonel Jason Bohm, commanding officer of the 5th Marine Regiment, left the headquarter company. But before he left, he said to me, who amongst your ranks deserves special recognition for their contribution to your mission? And of course, you were at the top of the list in terms of people who we could not be who we are if it were not for you. So somehow, though, only Bruce's name is on this certificate. But we all know, Marlene, <laughs> that sometimes the ones who work the hardest and give the most are the quietest about what they have done. Yes. So let's. <laughs> that is called honor. And put up with this. <laughs> that is called. Um, <laughs> let me see what we call that. That's called, that is called love. That's called love. That, and and you both inspire the rest of us. And I would call that pride because we are so proud of both of you. So your names are on the list of friends of the fifth who stand out for significant contributions that you have made, not only to the founding of our organization, because as Nancy said, uh, you helped us with our articles of incorporation and then continued on in terms of being part of our advisory brigade. Uh, you have volunteered, you have donated, always there, both of you, as such great friends, you are the backbone uh, of, what, of our organization, what we stand for. Without such great community partners like yourselves, we would not be here today. So on behalf of the Dana Point Fifth Marine Regiment Support Group, Colonel Bohm and Sergeant Wynn, I want to wholeheartedly thank you for all the support you have given to our Marines, sailors, our wounded American heroes, and their families. So for those of you who don't know, our warriors right now are fighting in the Middle East against ISIS. And more than ever, we need patriotic friends like you, like many of you here in the organization and this Yacht Club. So Semper Fidelis means always faithful and that you are. And I wanted to be able to give this recognition to both of you. And just to say a few of the words on it, we deeply appreciate the support that you have shown and your hard work, professionalism, and loyal devotion as it's keeping in the finest traditions of the United States Marine Corps. You are Marines. Hurrah! And Super Fidelis. Thank you very much. sitting there. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you that there are so many organizations here that I don't think anybody was aware of all the organizations that the Beals had had some influence on. So I had to ask the source and I asked uh, Bruce if he would send me a list of all the organizations and beside them he put down names of people that he worked with especially in the setting up of the organization and with the fifth marines he put down pete hammer and terry rifkin because for those of you who don't know pete was the first president and now terry is the present president and so when i asked pete he said oh i don't have to talk about the fifth but i'll add another organization that's really been important and that's been the marine corps league for it's the um south coast detachment and so I'd like to welcome up here Pete Hammer. And I'm going to stand right with you, Pete. Thank you. I can use all the support I get. That's the one they run for. I told Bruce uh, when first came in that this was cruel and unusual punishment and that Nancy limited me to just one minute in terms of my remarks. Yeah. And as you know, or most of you know, I have the ability to make a long story longer. <laughs> but uh, Bruce and Marlene, uh, we go back about 10 years. Hard to believe it's been almost 10 years. You've been great friends to both my better half, Willa, and myself. And as they say uh, in front of 
every good man stands an outstanding woman, which is Marlene Beale. Well, let's not let friendship go too far. Bruce, Marlene, I think you remember some time ago, we, we gave you a challenge coin. And the challenge coin, for those of you who don't know, is if you have a challenge coin, you say, Bruce, Marlene, do you have your challenge coin? You can't borrow one. Do you have your challenge coin? And the answer is no, then I win. If they can produce a challenge coin, then I lose and I buy whatever it is. So you do have your challenge coin. Well, actually, actually, Bruce, this is not really a challenge coin. This is a token to get golf balls over the same. But seriously, I did want to say thank you all very much for your friendship, all that you've done for our community. You've been an integral part of our community. I've lost count in terms of the number of nonprofits that you've helped, in particular the Marine Corps League South Coast Detachment, and the help you gave us to uh, resolve a tax matter, which is just great, and continue on. So thank you very much for all that you've done not only for our Marine Corps League, but all the other nonprofits here in Dana Point. You're absolutely wonderful. Love you guys. I wanted to make sure that you had some sustenance tonight in addition to the nice cake that you got here. Some home-baked combat cookies. Thank you, Pete. I think that'll go down in history. That was only a little bit over a minute. There's several other organizations that the pe people that were the founders and that helped and worked along with the Beals couldn't be here because they had conflict. And one was the Festival of Wales Foundation. Do you know that they, Bruce and Marlene, converted the corporation to a more efficient, non-profit, director-driven foundation? So it had a rocky start at the beginning, and then Bruce and Marlene just came in and helped improve that. And they're nodding to that. And Donna Kalish was sorry she couldn't be here. Another one was the Dana Point uh, Cycling Foundation. They legally organized and achieved nonprofit status for the uh, Cycling Foundation. And also the Youth Sailing Group. Just a second, that's the Grand Prix of Dana Point. Yes. Yeah. That particular organization, just so. Yeah. Okay, the Grand Prix of Dana Point. I didn't use the right one. <laughs> and the Dana Point Youth Foundation, Youth Sailing, and uh, helped to legally organize and achieve their nonprofit status. Right? right. And we have uh, one last one right now the Hobie Memorial Foundation. Oh. And Robbie and Donna. as the vice president, and here we have the president and the real worker of the foundation, the secretary, and all of that, and that is Donnie Hills. Here, here. Hello, all. Uh, my name is Robbie Roberson, and I'm the president of the Hobie Memorial Foundation. That's Donna Jost. Uh, Bruce and Marlene, we want to thank you guys for giving us our nonprofit status, making us legitimate. It's been, you know, it's you been as tough. <laughs> it's, it's been tough, but it's been a real labor of love, you know, and to have somebody, you know, really recognize the watermen in, in this area. We talk about our culture. Well, before the harbor was built, I've been here 65 years, and my kindergarten teacher is right over there. Hi, Helen. <laughs> Helen was my kindergarten teacher. Over here at Sarah School, where they parked the school buses. That was a long time ago. Boy. And um, I just uh, hope we can, you know, keep moving along. We've got Bruce and Marlene watching our back, making sure everything's legit and everything. And we're uh, getting ready to build. We've already started production on the memorial. We have a model over here that uh, we're going to make some bronze uh, busts out of that and try to sell them to raise funds for the Memorial Foundation. The uh, 
the, the object of the foundation in the future after the memorial is constructed is to offer scholarships for the young upcoming entrepreneurs, if you will. And we'd like to focus on um, water sport, technology, anything to do with the ocean, and that even includes desal and anything that has to do with the ocean. And, uh, and they just play a big part in helping us establish this thing and raising the funds for it. So uh, one, I'd also like to thank the society for the contribution that you guys have done to us, for us. And um, I know it's based on where the location of this memorial is going to be. And right now, what we can tell everybody is we have a couple of places that are preliminary that we're looking at. And it's uh, got to go through the city, everything through the city. And we'll probably announce in the coming months where it's going to be. So um, with that, I'd like to let Donna take over and let her say a few words. Cause she's the, she holds it all together. But uh, one thing I'd like to say for Bruce and Marlene, uh, you know, writing the articles and books on the watermen, you know, the, the locals here, and, and recognizing them, it, it's just fantastic because we, like Hobie, we want to keep his flame alive for what he represents, what he started, and the culture here that he developed. I'm sure everybody gets to see, you know, Hobie's culture of not only surfing, uh, but the boating world. What was really spectacular is the America's Cup catamaran racing now. Mm -hmm. Hobie got to see that before he passed, and uh, they would, uh, a group of people would take him to watch him race, and it was just phenomenal. Um, Hobie getting to see that because he pretty much brought that catamaran sailing into our world today. So, um, Bruce, Marlene, thank you guys so much for helping us out and hope you stay with us. We're Great. counting on it. <laughs> thank you guys. As a, if I may, just to add a couple more perspectives to that. The Hobie Cat is the largest selling sailing vessel in the world. And it came to <laughs> point off the beach, Capitol Beach. There's one of the guys that did it. Wayne Wayne. If it wasn't for his home and him and the beach and everything there, I don't know if it would have happened. They drew the picture of the boat on the beach. That's where the idea came from. And, um, the other perspective, um, we use the mic. Yeah. 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 Do I have to repeat it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Everybody heard yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Wayne. Oh, I have to repeat it. Okay. Just two more perspectives, and one is that the Hobie Cat is the largest selling hundreds of thousands of boats in the world. And it was introduced right here in Dana Point, designed, manufactured, built everything right here in Dana Point. And this man here, Wayne Shaver, was intricately involved in that. <laughs> I think of him now as the father of the Kobe Cat. <laughs> or we call it a ranch. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> the other thing is the dimension of this Hobie Memorial is beyond your comprehension. It is an actual, it's a bronze statue to start with. It's an actual sized Hobie Cat 14, so 30, you know, 30 feet tall. With Hobie in actual size, his body hanging out, hiking out, as, hiking out as we call it, and sailing, and, and with a sh shit eating grin. <laughs> <laughs> People will come from all over the world, actually, because there are Hobie cats everywhere in the world. They will come from all over the world to, to look at this statue. I want to thank everybody from the community coming and sharing. And now, since this is the Dana Point Historical Founders Day program, I'd like to 
reintroduced and have our president, Barbara Johannes, come out and tell a lot of the things that Bruce does for the Historical Society. Thank you, Nancy. Before I go there, I want to be sure I thank Nancy Jenkins and Sandy Iverson for the wonderful evening we're having because they've organized this evening with the Dana Point Yacht Club for the bill. So please join me in thanking you. It's nice to come home from a two-week trip and know that something is in good hands and so I really appreciate them. Well, um, I believe it was Terry that mentioned that we're volunteers and the Dana Point Historical Society really is an all-volunteer organization. There is no one at the office who, you know, no executive secretary, no one like that. And so we're not perfect, but we do our best. And um, in, I think you would probably agree with me that one of the benefits of volunteering is not only working for a good cause or something you believe in or something you're interested in, but it's also working with the people that you meet when you're doing it. And so whether you're working with, it's the historical society or volunteering for an event in support of the fifth Marines or support group or volunteering for the Dana Point Symphony and other organizations that we've heard about tonight, there's real joy in getting to know people. And it was a pleasure for me through the home tour committee for the Dana Point Historical Society to get to know Marlene and Bruce when they were on our home tour committee, and they did that for eight years. They were on the, um, you know, the master committee that that uh, sponsors the home tour committee. They have ever since they joined the historical society, they have been sponsors of the home tour committee and docents. So they don't. They really do walk the walk. And it's uh, wonderful to have them in our organization. In addition to that, it's the job of the president usually to go out and find board members to be on the board and volunteers to help. Or the board members them have to go out and get those volunteers. And all of you in this room probably at some time or other have been asked to do that by us. But Bruce is one of the rare people that came to me and asked to be on the board of directors as the Oceanic Heritage Director. It, I was thrilled. And uh, so it is, that was my rare experience so far in being president for three and a half years, is to have that happen, to have somebody so dedicated to what they do to want to be a board member. And so, and of course, Bruce has a backer. He's got a secretary. He's got a staff. There's Marlene right there with him. Um, so Bruce has cre Bruce and Marlene have created the Oceanic Heritage Outline, and they donated that to the Historical Society, and we have it there for research. When um, uh, the Dana let's see, the, the Doheny State Beach Interpretive Association found out about that. They wanted a copy of it, and uh, Bruce agreed. But you all can read that outline if you go on our website. It is there, and uh, Marlene and Bruce update it and add to it all the time. So that is some 70 pages in length, and it's really a bibliography of what Bruce calls ground zero for watermen in Dana Point, men like Wayne Schaefer. And so um, they, he has, they also created history that we had for and have sold um, at our events. Sold out. Sold out, we have to have a reprint, right? And we have copies of five oral histories that Bruce has done interviews where he has interviewed people and they have been um, printed and uh, Mary Crowell has all of our oral histories organized in the museum for anyone to come and read or uh, do research on they're available and 
Nancy is holding those in her hand. Um, so they have recorded history. They have researched history. And they have involved people like Robbie and Wayne in an effort to have the Hobie Memorial here in Dana Point. I wanted to add one thing to Robbie's comments. We did not say that we were pledging the Historic Society $10,000 depending on where the location was. We didn't say that. We said when the location is named, we will pay you the balance of that, that pledge. So it's not that we're being picky. We, we want that memorial in Dana Point, but we just want it to have a spot to put it on. And he's, as uh, Robbie shared, that is a, an effort that has yet to uh, be completed. So it is um, especially important tonight that we're all gathered here to honor Marlene and Bruce they are wonderful examples of service to the community across the community. And each of us, each of these organizations value their contributions and we all think of them as friends. Thank you very much. Um, there's more. Uh, Nancy is going to tell you about a book that uh, Bruce wrote. And this is just a little entry. It shows another whole side of Bruce, and I hope I get everybody to go into Kindle or Amazon and get a copy of this book. <laughs> and this book is Proteus. And for me to explain what this book is, I'm going to read a little bit from two portions. Proteus. In Greek mythology, Proteus was an early sea god, sea god one of several deities whom Homer calls the old man of the sea. Some who ascribe to him a specific domain call him the god of elusive sea change, which suggests the constantly changing nature of the sea or the liquid quality of water in general. Bruce kept this in mind as he wrote this. And on the back of it, it says, five million years of solar energy, of decayed dinosaurs, and vast fern forests and peat moss all locked up in oil being destroyed in a matter of months or at best years. What has to happen to the billions of people who, whether they realize it or not, depend on oil for their very survival? Without oil, the world could not support a small fraction of the present population. Who would live and who would die? A desperate struggle for survival has already in progress. This is that story. Fiction may be too real. Enjoy the reading this summer. Scott? Scott, We have a very special tribute to end up our program tonight with Scott and then we'll give a special honor and we can stay around and talk to the Beals. Scott. by a rattlesnake, you'll recognize that. <laughs> except Antarctica, and we're working on the penguins.
that Bruce and Marlene have called their domicile in this country, abroad. The thing I think about Bruce, and I just think of the personal time he and Marlene and I have spent upstairs in, uh, in the bar at the Yacht Club here and any other place we managed to talk about the 50% of the things we disagree about. <laughs> there's one thing that is the most important of them all. And uh, so he, Bruce asked me, he said, would you please play something that could both maybe recognize Marlene and me, but more importantly, honor the country that has given us the greatest gift of all, the United States of America. So I prepared two tunes. One, well, actually both of them you'll know. The first one I'm gonna play instrumentally. The second one I'm gonna play the first verse instrumentally, and I hope you'll all join in the second, uh, in the second verse. So if you can all rise for the first one. first verse through so you'll get and uh, Melissa Perdue who is our first lady of the Dana Point Yacht Club Bob Perdue's wife our Commodore's wife will lead us in verse in the second verse <laughs>
Awesome. Proclamation for Bruce and Marlene Beal, recipients of the 2016 Founders Day Award. Most of this you've already heard, but you've heard it from individuals, so I am not going to repeat, except to say that um, Bruce and Marlene came here in 1999, and uh, Bruce and Marlene are Dana Point Historical Society life members who have served on the Dana Point Historical Society Home Tour Committee for eight years, supported each tour as business sponsors and docents, and are to be congratulated for their volunteerism throughout Dana Point. Be it now therefore resolved by the Board of Directors and members of the Dana Point Historical Society that Marlene and Bruce Beal be presented the 2016 Founders Day Award in recognition of their active participation in our community this day, the 25th day of May, I want to thank Carl Iverson for the wonderful collage he put together that Bruce and Marlene are going yeah. to take home with them today. Wow. <laughs> and um, I guess that I can only say that what an honor. And um, I'm touched deeply, and I know Bruce is too. Um, I think where I really want to go is when we first moved here, Bruce took off for an overseas assignment. So there I am. Hmm, what am I going to learn about Dana Point? And I opened up the uh, little local paper. At that time, I remembered his name. Dennis Kaiser was the um, publisher. And uh, the Dana Point News was, okay. And there was a meeting for the Historical Society. <laughs> so I went, I'm going. And I could not believe it when I walked away. And when Bruce got back, I said, Bruce, I've met the most intelligent group in Dana Point. It was that impressive. <laughs> so thank you, Dana Point Historical Society. And I'll let Bruce say something. Thank you to all of you, too. Hey, wow. I don't know what to say, I want to cry. Um, uh, all I can say is that we are the lucky ones, and I, I don't say just us, but everybody in this room, we are the lucky ones. We are lucky to find Dana Point at all, uh, you know, in all the points in the universe. Could be. We were lucky there, and, and we were lucky to find a place to, to land, and we're still in the same house. We, but at first, we were lucky, as Marlene says, to start with the Dana Point Historical Society. It all comes down to good people, and you're all good people. And then we went to other organizations, and they were all good people. And it's just been wonderful. Um, back to we're lucky to be in Dana Point. I didn't even know, i got to be truthful with you, I didn't know Dana Point existed until 1980 six or seven. <laughs> I had no idea. 
I was in Pasadena and I drove down to San Diego for a deposition and it was over early, so I said, oh, I'm gonna drive back on the coast because I had never done that. Didn't, you know, I was new to California. Um, and I drove the coast and uh, I was just gonna hug the coast and go all the way up. I went to PCH and Dana Point Harbor Drive and I turned left thinking I was gonna keep going up the coast. No, I ended up at the Ocean Institute, no, or the Orange County <laughs> Institute. And I had to turn around and come back, and that's when I could see see all these boats. There's boats all over the place. There's parks, there's trees, beautiful trees, there's, there's beautiful cliffs, there's houses here. I go, what? Where did this place come from? So I, in the back of my mind, I went, you got a way here, buddy. <laughs> so I drove back to Pasadena, went up to Oregon, met Marlene at a bike event, and she relates to me, she's been looking to move to Southern California, and she was looking in Laguna Beach, and she's going, that's expensive, <laughs> and of course, Laguna Beach. Anyway, she came down, we got married, then we decided we were going to go down to this area, you know? Of course, I cajoled her, I pushed her to Dana Point, because, you know, back in my mind, with Dana Point. The second house we walked into that day, she goes, this is the house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we drove down to the Renaissance. I don't know if you remember the Renaissance, but it's now uh, still water, still water. And we're eating lunch, talking about it. And this young guy walks up. He's our waiter. And he says, He's from Florida. And we go, You're from Florida? And he goes, Why did you come here? And he goes, He looks at us like we're from outer space you know, or something. And he goes, Surfing. <laughs> so, that you know got me to thinking, you know, serving Dana Point. I know that. Um, and let's see what after that. Um, so we moved down here, and like Marlene says, she, actually she got me. She could just yeah. go to a historical society meeting, which turned those were good people. You know, if you want to, if you want to be a good person, you surround yourself with good people all the time, and that's kind of what we've tried to do, and you started it with a historical society, and we just went on from, we went to the chamber, you know, and that was a bunch of good people. Yeah, there's a good example. <laughs> and, on, and on and on. So, um, we are the lucky ones. And um, I don't know what I can say other than that. That's about it. <laughs> thank you. I, oh, I want to thank all of you, of course, for being here, but especially Barbara, Johannes, for, uh, putting the show together with Nancy, Nancy and um, Sandy. She did a wonderful job, I'm, I'm amazed. <laughs> I want to thank the Dana Point Yacht Club for offering this space to us. They, they are the best place in Dana Point to have an event. <laughs> and I'm, not just, I'm not just saying that, the, the, the Lantern Awards, so the Dana Point News again, the Dana Point News, the Lantern, the Lantern Awards, uh, were we golden or silver? Huh? Gold. 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 So if you're planning an event, this is the place. Um, who else? Well, I guess that's it. Okay. <laughs>